Welcome back, Dark Souls fans, to enjoying a bit more of Dark Souls 3. I remain your host, Chad of Fury 333, and we're on the road to sacrifices. We're about to get the weapon that I'm looking forward to the most in this entire run, the Brigand Twin Daggers, but first we have to go through some crows. We're crow people. And I don't really care for crow people. Mostly because I don't really care for crows right now, although they have been peaceful as of late. But I did learn, a few days ago, that crow dive bombing is actually a thing. I think there's a nest near my house. They were getting at me and making my life a little bit difficult. Thankfully, after one day, they stopped, but it was still a little annoying. Not too bad, though. I had sunglasses on, wasn't worried about my eyes, but man, was it a pain in the butt to have crows die bombing you. Just a pair of them flapping behind me, squawking as they go past. I've never experienced that before, and it was definitely a novel and unpleasant one. But these are different, because I have a sword, and I'm willing to kill them, unlike crows, which I actually don't want to kill, and generally have liked before. Honestly, it felt like a bit of a betrayal. I know that sounds weird, but I always considered crows to be at least on neutral terms. The idea of crows disliking me didn't occur to me, and honestly was kind of uncomfortable. But this, on the other hand, is absolute hostility, and I'm well aware of that fact. I'm also well aware that that screaming there is going to be a bit of a problem come as soon as the next ones come down. Because that won't be in too much time. There is one over the- ow. Man, that was so much for parry. Okay, seriously, this is not good. I probably should just not try to parry you right now. But I don't care. Because I can. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There! No. Well, I got a partial. Okay, this is not working at all. Where's this other guy coming from the screen? There's another one that should be coming in from that screen, and I don't know where they're coming from. They're up on the cliff, and that's usually where they come from after the giant spellcaster poison woman screams. Not to mention the fact that I actually have to deal with that not having a whole lot of HP. There they are! Okay. Or it is. Oh, actually, you're not using the giant scythe. You might be easier to parry. Bit of a shame I already killed you, then. Your poison is done. You might go for a scream. You're gonna go for a scream. Okay, cool. That's useless now. You are already dead. Oh, is it not totally useless? Did one just wake up? One just woke up, didn't they? Well, come at me. Yeah! Yeah! Ha! Alright, there we go. That should be all the Corvians. Or, not Corvians. These are called something different. Corvians are in the Ashes of Ariandel DLC. Also, I thought there was a way to drop down from here onto the area I care about with the Brigand Twin Daggers, but apparently that is not the case. I misinterpreted what I saw in that Let's Play. Ah, uh, not Let's Play. In that speedrun. That's what it was. It was a speedrun I watched that involved dropping down from somewhere onto the Brigand Twin Daggers. And I don't know where that is. But I can just take the straight path, fight Mildred, and then get the Brigand Twin Daggers. And it's going to be great. All right. Hey, Mildred. Come at me. Ow! I didn't expect you to actually come at me this quickly. Okay. Well, that's loads of damage. I do not want to deal with that if I don't have to. Do you have poise? Ha! You don't have poise! You do have rolls, though. That might be poise. Aha! There we go! Trying to go for the special attack on me, are you? Too bad. That's Mildred done. Butcher Knife is mine. It does reference Manager Mildred, right? I recall it doing so. It's something that I would expect it to do. And it doesn't actually mention her name. A mad woman haunting the road of sacrifices who acquired a taste for human flesh. That's probably Mildred. I mean, it looks like Mildred, it sounds like Mildred, it's Mildred. And these are the Brigand Twin Daggers! Hooray! I will not equip them yet. I'm gonna wait till I get a bonfire, because the Brigand Twin Daggers are nowhere near as upgraded as my Twin Blades right now, and I don't really feel like using unupgraded weapons in an area that's meant to be at my level. Let's wait. Just a little bit. So, I can go up here and get a bunch of stuff without any crow people in the way. Normally they'd be sleeping around here. Not right now. They were got woken up. Didn't manage to stop the person who woke them up before they woke them up. And also, how many Titanite Shards do I have? Can I upgrade fully? No, I cannot. I need two more Titanite Shards to upgrade those daggers to plus three. I don't recall when I get the ashes that allow me to purchase Titanite Shards. I believe it's somewhere halfway through, through Farron Keep. Possibly in the Road of Sacrifices, though. I don't recall entirely. Ah, now you are going to have a plenty long vulnerable period I can take advantage of. Those guys, not so much. 
Actually, I might be able to take advantage of this fact. Well, you're not doing much. Ha! Eat magic! And then eat- ow! There we go. Seriously? Wow, you're deceptively quick, but you're not good enough. And the other one should be back there. Once I manage to get through to it, then I can kill it. Oh, it's hanging out there. Okay, well, my two choices right now are to let the ones come at me right now and hope for the best, which is the choice I'm going to take, because the other choices involve fighting dogs. And we've already talked about my opinion on fighting dogs. I'm not entirely keen on the prospect. Not to mention, they were way easier to eat, and they are Corvians. Okay, then that raises the question of who the people in the Ashes DLC are, unless they're also Corvians, and it's just that everyone's a Corvian. So, as for the thing I was discussing earlier, if I go down a path involving a drop, come to think of it, yeah, this drop right here. So if I drop down here, there's going to be a couple dogs I have to deal with. There is a tome, one of the miracle tomes, and once I get through the dog, then I can get it. And it's not dogs, plural, I forgot there were two, and they shoot poison, apparently. That's, what? And they bite, apparently, too. Okay, that's news. I guess that must be that one special poison dog. That's... Wow, I have never had that happen to me before. What the heck is under its undercarriage? And by undercarriage, I mean ribcage. But I can only think of cars at the moment, apparently. Now let's get you your tune-up. Ah! You're due for regular service! You will... Be serviced! Or at the very least, have your blood changed. I guess it's supposed to be pregnant or... No, pregnancy wouldn't work that way. I imagine, or at least hope. I don't honestly know how canine pregnancy works, but I assume it works like most mammals, where the bit of flesh and everything that's holding the child inside is mostly inside of the body. I'll admittedly, though, I'm not too familiar with how emaciated creatures work that way. Are you gonna go winged form on me? Yes, good, thank you. That makes my life a lot easier. Because that means you are vulnerable. So at this point, I thought there was something here. There was not. There are, however, enemies down there. And they are the top priority. Actually, can I deal with I think I can deal with them easily. Because I has magic. I also have arrows. I might want to use those instead. Let's see, soul arrow does that, and regular arrows do less. And soul arrow's homing. That might be relevant. Might just, but I also have loads of arrows. Actually, I also have loads of magic, come to think of it. Are the other ones over there? They are. And they're gonna scream. Ah, that might give a buff. I just recalled something about that, which I think is relevant, because I'm pretty sure that that scream was the reason one of the glowing red eyes, and then that means the buff, and I want to make sure I don't get hit by that too much. Oh, okay. You're gonna be interesting. You're also gonna be dead. But you had the- you had fire. You had fire in your heart. And that's what matters. I mean, granted, your heart's now splayed all over the ground, so I suppose the ground should be on fire right now. These metaphors are just tortured as hell. Anyway, let's go talk to Henri. And hopefully don't miss anything along the way. I don't recall there's anything back here, and I was not recalling correctly, I don't think, because there was nothing there. Hey, Henri! Oh, hello. How do you do? I'm Henri of Astora. Unkindled like you. This is Horace, a friend and travelling companion. Oh yeah, him. Are you too in search of the Lords of Cinder? Yep. We're well along the road of sacrifices. Below us is the Crucifixion Woods. Beyond the flooded woods lies Farron Keep, home of the Undead Legion. Further yet is the Cathedral of the Deep. That explains how I got mixed up the first we time. We see the Cathedral, home of the grim Aldrich. We may go our separate ways now, but we are both seekers of lords. The next time we cross paths, one may find the other in a time of need. May the flames guide your way. Oh, yes. Horace. He's not very talkative. But don't think ill of him. He is an upstanding, kind-hearted knight. A fine partner for this grueling journey. Without his help, 
I would have cursed this onerous duty long ago. <laughs> Aha! Blue is not coming in. We are well along the road. Okay, you're not gonna tell me. So, the bit I was worried about was the Farron Keep thing. He mentions Farron Keep, and then beyond that, the Cathedral of the Deep. I don't know if that's a mistake, because in practice it's the other way around. And you also need to get through the Cathedral before you can get through the areas past Farron Keep. But Farron Keep is not where you need to go first. A mistake I made the first time I played through this game, where I went through Farron Keep and the area past it, and then got stopped because I needed to have beaten the Cathedral in order to continue. And that was embarrassing. So that's probably why I made the mistake, because I was assuming that Henri's dialogue was an accurate reflection of the geography. For the time being, though, I have souls to spend. Oh, hey, it's Sarah. Hmm. You're an unkindled, aren't you? I am Sirius. Sirius, not Sarah. Realms former servant of the divinity. Duties we each bear, but one's duty is a solitary affair. I doubt we've much to gain from fraternization. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. Thanks. I doubt we've much to bless. Okay, we'll start at that quest. Anyway, back to the road to sacrifices. So now the next step is to go down here. And that's Farron Keep over there, which, like I said, it's so obviously there. Like, they want you to go there. The cathedral's over there, really hard to see. Actually, is it? I'm not even sure that's the building. I have to walk around a bit because it's hard to tell that that mountainside's in the way. Also, you're a pain. Like I said, you're a pain. Don't be a pain. I said, don't be a pain. Ah! Oh, sheesh. Well, that was a mistake. Get down here. Aha! Now I've got you now! I can heal off you too! Sort of. This is not the way I intended to go, but it does give me a bit more room to check if this is actually the cathedral, and I can't tell. I'm guessing it is. This is roughly the right direction. So this way is a bit of a tricky way, because it involves some enemies that are a pain in the butt to deal with. And also involves some um, giants. These mushrooms actually are not that hard. Come to think of it, the way that the rings I'm wearing work, the left eye, that actually makes me heal, makes me heal a lot from those poison enemies, especially compared to fighting this thing. Although admittedly, I can do this, and I can also do this. Haha! I have a quick step now because I can because that's weapon art, and I'm poisoned too. I just realized I don't have any ways of avoiding poison currently in my inventory. I might have none. No, I have none! I do not have any way of stopping this damage from hurting me. I have a feeling that there's something here I can get. And by feeling, I mean vain hope. Because I actually don't think I can get any poison moss. Pretty sure I need to have purchased that. I should survive this. It's just a pain because now I have to deal with all the spear wielders and another dog, and yeah, this is a bit of a pain. Die! Ha! Ha! On the other hand, I'm gonna be able to deal with these enemies with a lot of attacks, which means I can get my HP back! Until I get hit. Then it's kind of a moot point. Now, oh. One more Titanite shard, and I have plus three daggers. For now, though, it is kind of nice to have this ring, because it means that as long as I'm attacking, and I can attack enough times to do this, I get my HP relatively back into a healthy enough position. I mean, it's obviously being mooted by the fact that people are hitting me. But it's something. Oh, almost halfway done. There should be a bonfire around here pretty quick. If I find that, I can then start dealing with purchasing more stuff, because I think the handmaiden has some moss. And if she doesn't, then I'm sure I'll find some eventually. At the very least, I can upgrade my daggers now with that extra Titanite charge. Also, there's an area right there with all those mushrooms. I can just go there anytime and fully re repair my HP. In fact, I'm going to go there last because going through there is going to refill my HP for free. And make me really happy I got the ring that I got. But first, let's deal with the human enemies because they're going to be the biggest problem. Once they're dead, then... Yeah, let's deal with the mushrooms. 
between the poison and the fact that these spears are dangerous. Ah! Okay, that's too dangerous. Maybe I shouldn't have bothered with this so quickly! Ah! Right! That's the dash! Crap, I've killed myself. Ah, nope, you're not letting me kill you. No, that's not gonna work. Oh, shoot. Alright, second try, no poison. See how this goes. Uh, granted, I'm assuming I'm not gonna get poisoned by these things. But hey, there's a bunch of enemies that are getting a lot of hits and thus healing me a lot of HP if they weren't so keen on touching me all the time. Well, okay, now they're dead. More Titanite shards, which is good. Though becoming increasingly useless. But... Ah, it. Wow, seriously? That's all the HP I get? I thought I got more. I mean, the thing is, there are a couple more rings that I can get that will increase the amount of HP I get from killing enemies, and another one that increases that gets me HP when I do backstabs or parry reposts. So I'll grant that that is a thing I can do later, but it's not really a relevant thing yet, and it won't be a relevant thing until the midway point of the game. So right now, I'm much more concerned about finding that bonfire and getting myself in a position where I can actually deal with this stuff effectively. And there's the bonfire, okay. Right there, center screen. More important thing, though, is the spears again. Oh. Thanks for running into the daggers, Doug. You are most guy. Unlike the spear wielder, that is clearly not quite as courteous as their dog. At this point, I can't remember exactly what is left to deal with. This area is very difficult to remember just because of the way that it's so flat and hilly and doesn't have any super clear landmarks. It has some, like this well, this beam of light, effectively. I don't know if I call that clear. And I know there's another area that I can go up to that will get me beyond where this this path goes. Like, this path will go around to another spot, which has more dogs and spear wielders, which I might have already killed. And the other side is the bonfire. Which I have not yet lit. But it is a super useful bonfire. It makes it very easy to fight the boss of the area. Because I can take it, just take a shortcut jumping down there. Now at this point my priority is actually get rid of the boss. There is some item I can get over there past the area that I turned back from earlier. That's important, but it's not important yet. I don't have any of the materials I would need to use it if it's what I think it is. I think it's heavy, sharp, and... Because it allows for more infusions. I think the infusions it allows for are heavy, sharp... And po either poison or something related to darker fire. It's it's one I can't remember offhand. I and mean, fire is already available, so I don't know the rest of it are. The rest of it is. I can grammar. I just choose not to sometimes. But if I can remember the rest of it, then I should be able to get through there no problem. Also, I have business to take care of over in Firelink. So we'll deal with everything else on this side of the Road of Sacrifices after I go get some levels and more equipment upgrades. So before I go to the Crystal Sage, there's a couple other things I want to deal with besides, you know, just dealing with more you, which apparently I'm not dealing with properly since I didn't set myself up to deal with this stuff. I don't really see much point in pairing these guys yet. Not worth the attempt, as far as I'm concerned, and I get HP back if I just attack them a bunch. Would you stop being quite so aggressive? Thank you. Mostly from me killing you, but thank you for dying. Thank you for operating along the laws of biology in as much as you die when you're cut sufficiently. Or get a knife in your back. That works too. The important thing is that you die. And I don't. And I get an Essa shard, which is why I came around here in the first place. I think this is an ember, and that is an enemy who might become hostile? Yes, will become hostile. Yeah! Not if I can stun you out of it! Oh crap, I gotta be careful. The one behind him. The one behind this one is actually not very hostile unless I provoke it. Mm. 
Okay, now you're dead. Aha! There we go. I could kill the one behind it, too. I can't remember if it's guarding something. I think it is. Might as well. Just, you know, for the sake of killing. Because, you know, killing is its own reward. Although, to be fair, facetiousness aside, I do actually get souls out of that. Quite a few as well. And there's a bonfire, but I can't rest here. I could kill myself, but that doesn't seem productive. Anyway, the main target is through here. And I have to do this carefully as well. Same thing as with the High Wall of Lothric. There's a bell ringer here, and they're going to be a pain if they get to wake up anybody, which they don't. That Farron Dart would be a little bit nicer if it didn't exist. Okay, so one of you is awake. You are the one throwing Farron Darts at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is some free HP. And free Estus charge. Even better. And apparently I can't backstab you. Aren't you lucky? Your friend is... No, actually, your friend is lucky as well. Sort of. Actually, I would say you're not lucky. Why would I say you're lucky? You're feeling pain. That doesn't sound lucky to me at all. See, if that wasn't painful for you, if that was just an instant kill, then I agree. You know, you're you're fine. Not great, because you are dead. But at least it's a one-and-done thing. You aren't getting chopped up multiple times as I leech HP off of you. And actually heal the full without using my Estus. In fact, I got a net gain of Estus. Since when does that happen in Dark Souls? Okay, I'll admit, Dark Souls 3, it does happen because of the way that Estus works. Thanks. Well, at least I can kick them. And just cut them to get HP back. So first thing on the list, I need to get the person who gives me sorcery, who is up here, who is not Yol. The person who gives me every other sorcery in the game. And is up here? Well, I missed the door. They are right here. Do I have anything else to kill over here? There's a Titan and Lizard on the other side. That's about it. Well, Hello. this is unexpected. I don't often have visitors. What do you want? This is my study that you've happened upon. If you haven't any business, I have reading to get back to. I wish to learn sorceries. How intriguing. It Very well. Indeed, oh. I am a sorcerer. With plenty to share. Good. However, what champion demands service without recompense? I do. Clearly, you are not that sort of woman. Sure, let's go with that. So you will make me a promise. That in exchange for my teaching, you will bring me knowledge. In the form of scrolls detailing sorcery's secrets. Well, can you assure me of this? Since giving you scrolls is going to give you spells you can give to me, yeah, that seems Very like benefits well. me most. You're no fool. I take it you understand the weight of a promise. I am Orbeck, a Vinheim, unkindled one. I shall teach you sorceries. We will learn together. It shall be like our very own school. I take it you missed the dragon school back home, huh? Anyhow, with Orbeck, we do have more spells. I don't know if I have the intelligence for it, though. I haven't actually been putting a lot of effort into getting intelligence. I, I got enough to get the things I wanted, and then I stopped really looking very hard. Okay. I don't want to drop down there. That's not fatal, but there's not a whole lot there that's super useful immediately. And I don't want to get too far off in any other direction, but there is this thing here, which I think contains a sharp gem. Might contain other useful things. Get out of my way. You aren't relevant. You're not a tiny lizard. You let the tiny lizard get away. You jerk. <laughs> okay, now I'll kill you. Crystal gem. Oh, okay, that's gonna not be relevant for a long time. I don't think I get the ember to make that one until the mid game or mid to late game. Anyway. Ow! Wow, that's a jerk move. Die! What? You're not dead yet? Okay, now die. And this is why I wanted to get through this path. Granted, I don't unlock anything. This is already open. I could have taken it in the first place. But, nah. Yeah! Get critical! Ooh, that has some beautiful critical damage. I was starting to get worried because my critical damage was quite low, although, once again, compared to Bloodborne's visceral attacks, which are ridiculously strong, 
like basically every other attack in Bloodborne. On both sides, honestly. You take a lot more damage in Bloodborne than in Dark Souls. You deal a lot more damage in Bloodborne than in Dark Souls. It goes both ways. Anyhow, that aside, the the damage dealt is somewhere in the thousands early on. This is a bit of a difference. And by a bit, I mean actually quite a lot of a difference. But at the same time, the daggers in general, as a weapon class, are very good at dealing critical damage. So it works out overall. So that's Farron Keep over there, which I'm not going to deal with because that is not my immediate priority, and might as well grab this stuff here too. Don't remember what's here exactly. There is... Ooh, green Blossom, nice. There is a Pyromancy Tome over somewhere. And there's actually also this crab and armor I do want to grab, even though it isn't the way to Farron Keep. Not sure if I'm going to use it, but it's some good armor. Yeah, crab! I'm not a big fan of crabs, although actually, come to think of it, if I hit them enough times, they end up... They end up dropping, and I can deal a bunch of damage to them. Ow! Or they hit me. Ah, sheesh. There we go! Ah, yes, there we go, there's the stab, and it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage. Like, 400 damage total. Not bad, not great. This crab is honestly feeling like a mini-boss right now. Thankfully, I still have the FP for iframes. The way this works, the way that the Brigand Twin Daggers art works, is that you only have invincibility frames as long as you have FP. And I currently am running low on FP. I'm also running low on SS entirely, but that's fine, because I was planning on going back up the beach. Back up to the bonfire. And not dying along the way, hopefully, because there are a bunch of spear wielders along the way, and they're not fun. Going from the bonfire to Ah Wait, what am I doing? I have this I have the quick step. Going from the bonfire to the boss fight is easy. Going from the boss fight to the bonfire is not quite as easy. So, considering what I have now, I got 4,000 souls, I have another 800 or so, no, quite a bit in inventory. Alright, one more level up session, or level up cut, and then the boss fight. Oh, you're back then. Again, I'm Orbeck of Vinheim, here to teach you sorceries. If you would. Let us begin with the basics. The ideal sorcerer bears the twin faces of the dragon. Uh-huh. Oh, you could at least act as if you're paying attention. I don't need Dragon Academy stuff. I just need to shoot things. Heavy Soul Arrow. Okay, I don't remember which one's better. Well, Great Soul Arrow requires more. Heavy Soul Arrow I already have. What am I thinking? 15, 18... 22, 23. Don't need this one so much. It'll help in the Deacons of the Deep fight, the Cathedral boss fight, but it's not as necessary for this build as it would be for a build more sorcery dependent. Oh! And you have much cheaper magic weapon and magic shield than Yul does. Much cheaper magic weapon and magic shield than Yul does. Huh. That changes things. Okay, well, considering the circumstances, and considering what I would like to get... Spook is mass- Ooh! Oh, hey! I was talking about fall damage earlier with the Farron Keep thing off of Undead Settlement. I don't think this would survive it, because I'm pretty sure there's a hard-coded death plane. But! Fall damage reduction. There's a thing. Not sure I'm going to use it until I have the attunement to do it, though. I do like to have the stuff I have. I think magic weapon's a good option. Spook might not be a bad idea. Magic shield... I don't know if that works on weapons. I want to experiment, but I know that Spook is going to be much more useful as a general tool. And I'm going to need a bit more intelligence. 15, not bad. I can work with that. Eventually, I do plan to get like 40 intelligence. I just don't want to get it too immediately until it becomes especially useful. Anyway, Spook. That seems most productive. And you have more Farron darts. Why would I need that? Anyway. Come again. Now. I will suddenly jump cut. 
to the Road of Sacrifices. That's our shortcut. So the next boss, they're a bit tricky. I do not know how well I'm going to do against them. They are tough in the second phase. Kind of the opposite of the Curse Rod of Greatwood. Their second phase is a real pain in the butt. Their first phase, not too hard. Not too much of a challenge. But the second phase, you have to deal with a lot of crap. Mostly you have to deal with them just being a pain with having multiple copies and those multiple copies hitting you for a load of damage. And it's kind of crap. Alright. Super magic dagger time! And avoiding soul arrow time. Oh, it's fire and dart. Okay, cool. Avoiding soul arrow is going to be easy. Or soul spear, whatever you're using. Goodbye! I'm going to kill your master. All right, what are you doing? Ah, doing that. Da! Ha! So there's a trick to this boss fight. If I have the orb, it summons orbs above its head. And if I make sure that one of those stakes around, it won't fall, won't go away. I don't know if it's using that attack though. I would like it to use that before it goes into stage two, which it will after the next volley. It'll rise up again, I'll smack it again. It'll hit it enough times to knock it into stage two. Nope. Actually, it might already be in stage two. That might... I think that's a stage two... Yep, that was a stage two shift. Shoot. Okay, you're only relevant for damage. You're also only relevant for damage. That's the spell I was talking about, but it's irrelevant now since it's stage two. Ow, seriously? This is what I meant about not being sure how this is going to go. I think it's like a brick. Okay, there we go. Just need to get to the sides. So that only one. Yes! Oh, come on. Good thing I spent my souls already, because I'm gonna have to make do without them for now. Okay, hopefully it doesn't home back. Come on! Oh wait, this is possible. No, it's not stage two yet. I have another round to go of it. Then it'll be stage two. And the question is, are you gonna go for the thing that I want? No, you're not. You're gonna go for a slightly inconvenient option, but at least I've damaged you more before stage two starts. So that's something. So you gotta remember now that I have the quick step. Oh, it's not stage two yet. Yes. Ah! Oh, shoot. Still gotta remember I have the quick step though. That is gonna be a lifesaver if I remember it. Oh yes. Nailed you first try. If I can do that, at the very least, it'll keep it from being a problem. But that was a luck thing. Okay, there you are. Aha! Now you're dead, and I've killed- I've killed you? Oh, come on. One more? Seriously? Alright, fine. Fine, fine, fine. I can kill you one more time. Nope. Okay, there you are. I'm going entirely the wrong way here. Yeah. Oh, good. All the attacks that hit it like brick missed, and I kill you. <laughs> Every bit of that damage counted, so I don't see why not. Anyhow, that is the Crystal Sage. Taking me exactly as many tries as I expected it to, even though I actually should have mentioned that earlier. Last time I tried it, it was about three tries. First time I ever tried it, it was once, but that was because I was overleveled, having beaten the Abyss Watchers. But the Abyss Watchers were way, way harder as a result of the gate taking them out of order. So that was the Road of Sacrifices Short Edition.
the Cathedral of the Deep's up there, and it is important. But next episode, I am not sure what I want to do, because there's more to explore in the Road of Sacrifices, but a lot of that stuff is on the way to Farron Keep. The only thing I really want is that coal, but I don't think I need it for anything. Anyways, come back next episode to figure out which way I go! For the time being, though, thank you for watching, and enjoy stuff.